So it may already be obvious, but the UML actually has several different ways to describe how our system, which we are developing, will, be look, like, will look like when we are done with the development work. And uh, on this uh, divisioning between the structure diagrams, behavioral diagrams and interaction diagrams, which define the mechanical or technical structure of the system, how the system is expected to behave when we are using the system, and how the system is expected to interact with other uh, components or uh, systems when it's, when it's used, uh, is one way to define all these activities. Uh, like mentioned earlier, the UML is only a way to convey knowledge from one place to another. So this also means that the UML is not the only way of defining how things happen, or is it, nor is it the only way of defining what sort of behavior and what sort of views we have into the system. For example, there's a larger concept underlying here. It's called uh, systems architecture or software architecture. It means that we, like buildings, are defining things in views. In buildings we have blueprints which tell us how the electrics will be installed. There's a blueprint for plumbing, uh, plumbing and there's also a blueprint for the uh, construction work where the rigid walls are and which are load-bearing uh, components and which are not. Similarly, on software engineering, there's several views into the software development. And one of these uh, models is the 4 plus 1 view into architecture. Basically, this division says that there's 4 plus 1 views which are important for developing software. The logical view, which tells us what sort of objects we are going to be building for the uh, product. This includes all the classes and all the objects, how they communicate, how the system logistics works, and what sort of data, for example, we will be storing in the system. The second part is the development view. Uh, this uh, tells the developers more or less how the system is organized during the development, meaning that we the programmers always know which part is connected to what and also are able to work with the system under development. This is sometimes also called the implementation view and it's more or less the uh, roadmap or list that how things are organized uh, during the development. That's why the package diagram is also there. The process view uh, it describes the concurrency and synchronized aspects in the software and not only in the software but also in the process of using software or doing things. This means that not only is the process view telling us what, how the uh, components or objects are communicating each other and what, in what order things happen, but this also includes other aspects beyond the software component, for example, like using the net store to order something and all the concurrent activities happening in the warehouse, in the logistics system, in sales and billing, and in the store itself. So that's what the process view does. The physical view is basically the most obvious one. The physical view tells us how the software and hardware are related. And it's basically more or less the deployment diagram explaining how the system will be installed, how it will look like in when it's in the operating environment and what parts of the system goes where. The plus one view, which is implemented by the name 4 plus 1, is the use case view, also known as scenarios. This is more or less the explanation on how the system is expected to behave, what should be happening when the system is used, and how the customers or actors are supposed to use the system.
So it supports all the different views because the logical view is concerned only on the implementation from the viewpoint of programmers. The development views are more or less uh, involved on describing how the system will be organized during the development. The process view tells us what happens when the system is functioning beyond the scope of software and the physical view tells us how the system is organized when it's installed and in operation but none of these other views actually tell us how the system is expected to behave so therefore we also have the use case view here so comparing the view into the architecture with the idea of how we go from requirements which are collected from the customers into analytical architecture here and from the analytical architecture going into actual architecture and components over the selected platform developing source code and making deployable software we actually see that this pipeline is transferred into different focus areas which can be used to understand how the system behaves this is important because there's so much information in each software engineering project that we need to have different views into the software development to organize things or manage the environment or to build the environment or the operating environment or simply supporting the work of the developers while also understanding what the system is actually meant to do. Like with buildings which have the water, electric, heating, and the structural plants, uh, and air conditioning plants, all separate, but uh, complementing each other into describing how the system is expected to behave.